The M18 Hellcat is a well-known tank destroyer from the Second World War. With a combination of mobility and firepower, it fit well into the American doctrine of the time. Often forgotten is that this vehicle was not just used as a tank destroyer and saw a variety of uses both during and after the war. Some of these include the turretless chassis used for troop and ammo transport all the way to the bizarre M18 T55 hybrid created decades later. In this video, we won't be looking at either of those, although both do deserve their own videos in the future, but rather, we'll be looking at a project which could have seen service had World War II lasted longer. Today, we delve into the story of the Super Hellcat. If you're a fan of World War II history, first and foremost, why aren't you subscribed already? After you do that, I encourage you to do yourself another favor and check out today's sponsor, Call of War. Call of War is a free online strategy game which allows you to take control of real countries from the Second World War. Not only that, but unlike many other strategy games, Call of War is cross-platform, allowing you to continue playing even when you're away from your PC. This is great for those of you who are back in school since you won't have to wait all day to get back home and continue the battle. I'm a huge fan of World War II era games and with my content being often about vehicles from that period, I'm always glad to have sponsors that fit so well with the content. So try out the game for free by clicking the link below and start your battles against up to 100 other players right now on PC and mobile. By using my link, you'll also get 13,000 gold and one month of premium subscription for free. This offer is only available for 30 days, so set the game to download and enjoy the rest of this video while you wait. Now let's get into what you clicked on this video for. There are many factors that go into whether or not I will include a vehicle into this series. Oftentimes I pick tanks that have failed due to specific issues with their design that cause them to be either useless on the battlefield or prone to breakdowns. Other times I choose designs so outrageous they never left the paper they were drawn on. In between these two extremes is what I would consider probably the most common reason for a vehicle to be considered cursed by design. That being an upgrade to an existing vehicle which later ends up being unnecessary. Many times, these designs were not necessarily bad, but due to either the end of a war or better alternatives, the project never got off the ground. Today's topic is a perfect example of this. With its excellent performance on the battlefield, the M18 Hellcat is by far one of the most advanced armored vehicles from the Second World War. Featuring thin armor and a powerful 76mm cannon capable of defeating just about anything it faced, these tank destroyers packed quite a punch and could deliver that firepower wherever it was needed most. However, as you may recall from previous videos, it's rare for any vehicle, no matter how effective, to be left alone with the quest for increased firepower never ending. For the Hellcat, this came in late 1944 from the 12th Army Group who requested several improvements to the machine. These included greater frontal armor, a coaxial 50 cal, a turret roof, and more powerful main armament. The tank destroyer board, after studying the proposal, came back with a result quite similar to what I'm sure most of you are thinking right about now. The ideal requirements means a vehicle of basically different design from the M18. If all are met, these requirements will result in a vehicle of entirely different employment characteristics, in effect, a tank. This is without even considering the fact that as I mentioned just a moment ago, the M18 was already able to handle pretty much anything it was likely to encounter. So the need for a bigger gun was far from urgent. Nevertheless, it was decided that looking into the idea further couldn't hurt since if the war did drag on for longer, the firepower of the vehicle may need to be increased. This was clearly shown by the steady increase in firepower up to this point of the conflict. With tanks such as the Tiger II beginning to appear, this was certainly a possibility worth considering. The main problem with this, however, is that the M18 had by now finished its production cycle, and to fit the larger cannon into the existing turret would require almost a complete redesign to it. Although further production was proposed if the war dragged on, modification of current vehicles would not only take them out of commission during the upgrade process, but with most of the vehicles already overseas, it would be quite expensive. All hope was not lost though, and with the successor to the M10 having just entered production under the designation M36, a potential idea was formed. Not only did the M36 already feature a 90mm cannon, but following some measurements of that turret and the M18 in February 1945, it was decided to see if the turret swap could be done. 
This was finally put to the test several months later after the M36 turret they were allowed to use for the project had finished its testing. There are some conflicting dates given for when exactly the conversion took place, with photographs of the completed swap being dated as June 27, 1945, but other records stating it occurred in July. More than likely, the photos were misdated, but regardless, we know for certain that by the end of July the conversion had been completed. Overall, the turret swap was done without major issues, only needing a few parts of the M18 chassis to be adjusted slightly to accommodate the new turret. This included some trimming to the driver's hatch to prevent it from being blocked by the turret. With these changes made, the tank had gained around 3,000 pounds. Despite this increase in weight though, the tank still maintained its mobility with only a slight change in stance caused by more weight towards the rear of the TD. Finally, the moment of truth came and the 90mm cannon was loaded for testing. It was found that the tank would definitely require a muzzle brake after it was found that the tank would roll back 22 inches if the gun was fired with the brakes not applied. When testing was done with the muzzle brake fitted, this was reduced to less than an inch. Next, the tank was subjected to a 1000 mile endurance test. Thinking the increased weight could cause the tank to sink into the ground more, some experimental 21 inch T82 tracks were used instead of the original ones. However, after these quickly broke, the remainder of the trial was done using the original tracks. Overall, the tank was found to be satisfactory and was considered worthy of further development. Not only that, but the upgrade could be easily done in the field with it requiring no major changes to either the hull or turret. That being said, as any of you who know your World War II timeline will by now have figured out, the war in Europe had already been won by the time the testing was completed. With that, the last report for this project came in January of 1946. This particular project would not be the last time the M36 turret was used to upgun another tank, but that's a topic best left for another video. As for the Super Hellcat, we do have one final mystery I couldn't solve. Despite my searches, I was unable to find the origin of its nickname. I reached out to the chieftain who quite literally wrote the book on American TDs, and he was also unsure of where it came from. My first thought was that it came from World of Tanks players, since several other nicknames for tanks have come from that game. However, searches on Google predate the game's release by at least five years. The earliest mention I could find of the name seems to come from some modeling sites including one piece of box art featuring the name. If you happen to know anything more about this unofficial name which has attached itself to the tank, please let me know in the comments because I would really like to know. All that being said, the Super Hellcat designation was never officially used to refer to the tank as it was never accepted for production. As we can see, the M18 with 90mm GMC M36 turret was a good upgrade at the wrong time. Had it entered service, we can likely assume it would have performed quite similarly to the original M18. Had the war dragged on for longer in Europe, it's entirely likely this tank could have seen use in the field, although with the M36 itself reaching the war zone, it's hard to say. In my opinion, I could see this being used as a way to keep the turrets from damaged M36 tank destroyers in service, although the M18s and M36s were not used in the same units as far as I know, so it's debatable how often this might have actually occurred. Anyways, that wraps up the story of the Super Hellcat. As always, let me know what you think of this design down in the comments. I love reading what your opinions are of the tanks I research. If you're a fan of the M18, be sure to hit the subscribe button because I plan to make some more videos very soon on both the original tank as well as other bizarre variants of it. In the meantime, if you want to learn more about the specific details I left out of this video, I encourage you to pick up a copy of Can Openers which covers the development history of US tank destroyers. I'll leave a link to where you can get that book down below as it is one of the main sources I use for this video. Thanks again to Call of War for sponsoring this video. Remember to try the game out for free if you didn't do so already to get that special bonus just for signing up. Sponsors like them are what allow me to continue to increase my production quality and purchase new source material for future videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.